When we look back at Hurricane Ian, we think of all the destruction, the wreckage, and the lives lost in that powerful Category 4 storm. I wrote an article on News for Jax about another uh, legacy of this storm, and that's all the pollution that it's left behind. Now, when we take a look at some of the pictures, we see all the debris from boats and houses and everything that's pushed into the water and the mangroves. That's one aspect, but I also wrote about the pollution that's getting into the waters from uh, bacteria. There's a lot of problems with uh, nutrients getting in the water, creating uh, type of uh, algae blooms, and also uh, a lot of wastewater from the sewage treatment plants that have leached into the water. Take a look here. This is a, a view uh, from a satellite that was uh, posted on Twitter by a uh, user who actually uh, works in remote sensing with the Sentinel satellite. And here you can see the discolored water, the plumes of dirty water coming in from the bay, moving through the gaps in the barrier islands. And a lot of that water uh, had E. coli in it from sewage treatment plants and bacteria that is, uh, contains harmful pathogens. And much of this isn't just even confined to the coastal areas. Now, remember, <laughs> this hurricane dropped two feet of rain around the Orlando area. And all of that runoff uh, infiltrated the wastewater treatment uh, facilities. And with the power outages there, the liftout stations, which get sewage from homes to those treatment plants, weren't working. And so a lot of those treatment plants overflowed, spilling millions of gallons of sludge and wastewater that had bacteria into the surrounding areas. And here you can see a picture of uh, one of those wastewater treatment plants that had the water flowing out of the tops of those containers. So what's happening now? Well, a lot of researchers from the University of Florida, University of South Florida, and many other marine biologists are out there monitoring, collecting water samples. And uh, those water samples are showing a lot of uh, contaminations in it. Now, there's not a clear link between red tide and hurricanes, but uh, nutrient pollution is partially responsible, according to some of the research, when the nutrients get in the water, red tides can bloom. And certainly we've been seeing an increase in red tides in the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. All those red circles there are extremely high concentrations of Carina Borivius. That's the harmful uh, bacteria, the harmful algae that is in the water from a dinoflagellate, which can cause fish kills. So that's just another aspect here with Hurricane Ian. You can read more about it at newsforjax.com. I'm meteorologist Mark Collins.